You act like opposed to the non-family friendly camping trips that we usually have. Like you're like, oh, let's have a family friendly one. <laughs> let's have family friendly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Let's, care. Let's build a fire. Chop some wood. Yeah. Action. Quiet on the set. Yeah. <laughs> Just that squirt. <laughs> You're fired. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, actually, you know that's kind of that's kind of a good segue and a good intro. Um, tonight, I, I felt like blood put on my heart to talk about bad habits, um, and or not so much bad habits, but also old habits. And that we can't, um, we can't put the old with the new. Um, do you have any ideas, Bench? Uh, the old with the new. This is oh. a... Alright, so, ahead. so with, with bad habits, we have a lot of, we can grab onto a lot of bad habits that stop us from progressing forward into the future. Um, a lot of these bad habits, the Bible will call sin. We talk about that, I mean, somebody can have a bad habit, uh, they have a bad habit of lusting after everybody they talk to. So then they go off and they go and fornicate with with so and so and who and so and they end up destroying all of their relationships because they want to go off and have bad ha habits and ha and. <laughs> the peanut gallery. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, he was like lusting after everybody. This is, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to end it right now. Just gonna be like, yeah. Back on. No, but, but honestly, like that's a bad habit. People go out and they go and they they'll destroy their relationships by lusting after. Every um, man or woman that they go of the, or a person of opposite sex, oh, same sex, it doesn't matter. I mean, we'll, we'll be inclusive in this. Um, you go and lust after everybody that you talk to, and you go and you destroy all of your relationships because you complicate it with adultery and fornication. And it's like I, I can never have like a, a meaningful relationship because all I end up trying to have sex with all my friends. Like, I mean, that's a, a that's a bad habit. But you. But, but we also talk about bad habits. I mean, they could be like lying, like I'm a compulsive liar, or um, for some reason, I don't even know why, but I just lie about everything, or I lie to make myself look better. Um, I lie about the things I've done, or I lie about my age, or w whatever it is. Or you just act like a fool. And we can see a lot of times, like these bad habits will stop us from going into the future. We talk about, like podcasts, we talk about uh, procrastination, we talk about, um, I mean, there, there, there's a plethora of bad habits that we talk about that need to be reversed, or even old habits. Um, as a Christian, the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, that everything passes away and everything becomes new. But we have to continually be transformed by the renewing of our minds with the Word of God. Sometimes we can have things that aren't necessarily outwardly bad, like, you know, like, like going and trying to, to bang all the people that you meet, like Sodom and Gomorrah. But... You can have things that are that are bad enough that they stop you from from being the person that God wants you to be, and that's um, sometimes a new life doesn't have room for old habits. If your old habit was to go home and watch Netflix for three hours at night, maybe the new life that God has you walking into doesn't have room for that Netflix habit, or it doesn't have room for that video game habit, or it doesn't have room for for whatever it is. That new wine. Or, uh, yeah, new wine and old wineskin thing, and old wine, new wine, yeah, right, new wine, old, old wineskin. You can't put the new with the old. That, that, that shadow of an old wineskin, that's something that's already been stretched out, it's already been old. Think of a, something like a rubber bag. If rubber sits out in the sun, it gets, starts to dehydrate and get brittle. If, if we're trying to put something that's brand new inside something that's old, the old's gonna give out before the new does. So, these habits, it feels good, what makes them bad? If it feels good, what makes them bad? If it feels good, what, what makes it bad? It can be, it can be detrimental just because, just because it feel, a, a feel good, look good. I mean, I live by if it feels good, if it makes me happy, then I'm going to do it. We know that the Bible says that there's many ways that seem right to a man, but the end they lead to destruction. Just because something feels good, just because I, I store copious amounts of cocaine in because it makes me feel good, does, doesn't mean that my bank account's gonna be happy. Doesn't mean that the law is gonna be happy. Doesn't mean that it's, it's actually good for me because I'm gonna be broke, I'm gonna be penniless, I'm gonna destroy all the mucous membranes in my, in my head. Like, I mean, that's good. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Just because it feels good doesn't mean it is good. Mm -hmm. Also the classifications of stuff like you can have like you can have the same product that's classified in multiple different ways based off of purity like just because you're like you think of like olive oil 
which is a good example. It's like olive oil has different cooking, grades. But, oh, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> olive oil. <laughs> it's okay if it's a carb syrup, yeah, but, exactly. but if you cut it straight. Yeah, exactly. But it's like you can you can still be classified as olive oil without being pure olive oil. You know. And you know what? That's it. that's exactly it too. If you that that p picture that Benji's painting, pure olive oil is what we're looking for. God wants a pure sacrifice. He wants a pure life. We're called to be pure and holy. The Bible says in Psalm 24, who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in his holy place? It's only him with clean hands and a pure heart. You can have a 90% clean heart. You can have a 70% pure heart. You can have a 60% pure heart. Can you try to stand in his holy place? Yeah, that, that, that would be fine. But there's things that you're going to have to take into account for and it cheapens your life. There, there are habits. I was talking with a dear friend the other day. The Bible says that not all things are, all things are permissible, but not all things are profitable. What I mean by that, we were breaking it straight down to drinking. There are some people who can drink and, and there's no conviction on their heart. They can be a Christian, they can be in the, and they can come into the presence of God, have one or two beers responsibly and not receive conviction. But there's other people like somebody like me who God dealt with me in a very, in a very early stage to be completely pure and sober when it, comes, when it comes to alcohol and stay completely away from it. Why? Because the place that I'm going that might cause somebody else to stumble. Just because it's permissible for me doesn't mean it's going to be profitable. That's that olive oil. If I, would, if I had that drink in my life, I'd be 70% pure. I'd, I'd get the lower grade, I'd get that lower price instead of achieving the high calling which God is calling me to. What are the consequences? What are the consequences? To, to, like not, to being that 70% and not the 100%. What are the consequences? Like 70% is a passing grade. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's heavy and that's, that's legit. It's how far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to lay down your life and, and to be able to follow this thing? I mean, this is really a message to somebody who's accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And now it's how far are you willing to, to, to follow this rabbit trail? Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. Jesus said, <laughs> oh God. I mean, he's, he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, to understand what it means to have a Lord, that means that he's the complete, complete boss of your life. Go to show up to work. This is how this rolls. Show up to work. If you only listen to 70% of what your boss says, when it's promotion time coming around, the guy who's listening to 99% of what the boss says is going to get the promotion before the guy who's doing 70% of the work. That's the difference between 70 and 90. That's good. So I can't see the, so you use an example of things that I can see. I understand. I, I feel a physical effect in my bank account when I don't get promoted. Why, why should I deal, how do I know that any of this is legit? How do I know that you're telling me the truth? How do I know that there's a benefit to working harder than everybody else? That's, that's twofold. If I'm talking spiritual, the Bible says the just shall live by faith and it's by faith that people are justified. It's being able to say, God, I take you at your word's face value and I'm going to invest my full 100% into plan A. And to say, God, I believe you in your word. Because if, 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 if the Bible says, um, if the Bible says a promise and you say, okay, it says this and I, I should do this. If, if we don't do it, then that means that we don't believe it. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that right there. But when you're, what was the question again? Why should, I, why should I put in more effort if I'm not guaranteed a result? How do I know that there's a guarantee that I'm going to get paid back? Are we talking spiritual or are we talking physical? Spiritual. If we're talking spiritual, because the Bible says that to even approach the Lord, it has to be in faith. And that we have to come to God believing that He is a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek Him. Because that's who God is. And that's who the Bible says God is. Now all we have to do is just believe it. It's very simple to be a Christian and to be a victorious Christian. It's not easy, but it's simple. You read the word of God, you obey it, and you follow it with your whole heart. That's it. That's it. To love one another as I loved you. It, how hard is it to love? In theory, not hard. In practice, it's, it's not easy. But it's simple. It's simple. You can do it. Even an idiot can do it. Somebody asked me, like, why, why is the gospel so simple? Why is it that the, the, the guy who was a murderer his whole life, on his deathbed, he can accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and go to heaven. Or somebody who is uh, mentally retarded. How, like, this is so simple that somebody who is completely mentally handicapped can accept this and understand this. Why is it so simple? I don't understand. And the answer is, in God's heart, God wants all men to be saved. God wants everybody to be able to understand what he did and how to follow him. Because so, God loves you. 
And he has a perfect plan and a purpose for you. God sent his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. To know that Jesus Christ was the atonement. He was the propitiation for your sins. I know that's a big word. But it's basically, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. We all die. We all inherited Adam's sin. Our first father, the first person on the earth, according to the Bible, was Adam. He sinned. Him and Eve sinned. They fell out of the garden. Our life was in them. We are offspring of them, whether you can believe that or not. There's this inherent sin that runs through our veins that we don't have to teach our kids to be bad. Because everybody's bad right out the box. I don't care who you, who you say you are. You don't have to teach a kid to lie, cheat, and steal. It's just how it is. We're bad. But God still loves us and he wants to redeem us. The Bible says that you, you have to be born again to see the kingdom of God. And God said that the only way to pay for your sins is pure blood. None of our blood is pure. So he, when he came down and did it himself. He sent his only son Jesus to come and pay the price on the cross for us so that we can have a way back to him. And all we have to do is, say, is to believe that Jesus Christ did that. That's it. Accept him and say, okay, now I'm going to let your word control my life. That's it. Sorry, that was kind of a rant, but that was that was hot and heavy. That was hot and heavy. Anyone else have anything else to say? Well, I, I, I kind of we kind of went far away from from bad habits. Oh, we're at twelve. We're at thirteen now. So we're at thirteen minutes. Let me let me just wrap up bad habits. I guess there are a lot there are a lot of bad habits or old habits that can't go into the new life. Um, this was more, I guess, towards believers as much as I brought it back to really the foundations of what it is to be a Christian. Um, if you're looking to have a new life in Christ, if you're looking for that fresh start, the new beginning, know that there's going to be a lot of bad habits and a lot of old habits that are going to have to get out of the way so that the new life can come forward. And we need to drop those things. Um, it all depends on what we're willing to invest. If we're willing to invest 70%, we get the, we get 70% wage. If you're willing to invest 90, you'll get the promotion instead of the 70. That's, it. That's all she wrote. That's all she wrote, boys. Okay. Good job. Nice. Watermelon water. Thoughts? Aftertaste, but caffeine. 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 <laughs> caffeine aftertaste. Ooh.